Okay, so what we're going to cover is, as you know, uh, right, the reading section has quite a few uh, uh, sections, right, the, the passages. We're going to look at reading strategies specifically for history passages today, okay? The history passage. So what are the strategies you need uh, to work on the history passage, okay? And this, this uh, topic is super important. Uh, because once you understand history, right, it's like the gold standard. Once you understand this, you can also do lit, literature passages, and you can do uh, some other harder, right, uh, other harder passages which have harder language, okay? So the, so the focus today is on understanding the English language that was used in the 1700s, 1800s, right? So we're going we're gonna to talk uh, how to... How to get used to these ideas. And some of you have attended these sessions before, so maybe it's a bit repetitive, right? But we'll see how to work on this. So again, we're gonna focus on history passage, uh, history passage. but before that, in, the, in these uh, 10, 15 minutes, we are gonna uh, look at the various strategies that we can use, right? To uh, get an understanding of this passage. Okay, so, um, so let's get going. All right, uh, give me one second to get started and then we can um, uh, begin. Okay, um, one second. Uh, give me just one quick second and then we'll start. All right, so let's get started with the with the main idea. So what the way you can start these passages, right, is to understand this main idea that the that you need something very simple to start your passages, right? And the simplest idea to think about are quotes, right? The quotations that people have given, right? Of course, you need a passage. The usual reading passage is going to be six hundred to seven hundred words. Okay, that's that's a lot of words, but what are you gonna start with are quotes, okay? These are just one sentences, one sentence, uh, right? Passages, you can think about them. This is roughly maybe like 30, 30 words, 30 words-ish, okay? So let's start with this one. Let's start the, with the first one. And then we'll move on. Once we, we're done with the quotes, we're gonna do some mini passages. We're gonna do maybe one or two mini passages Okay, and then once you understand this, the idea, the strategies for this, uh, we're going to look at some questions over here as well. We're going to understand the idea of uh, rhetoric. Okay, um, and then the last one. So this one is going to be long, longish sentences, right? So Manor, I'm going to explain in just a quick minute. Longish sentences. How do you how do you reduce them and understand the sentence? And then the last one is going to be actually we're going to look at a, a, a seemingly hard passage, but the passage is hard. But the questions are easy. The questions are easy, right? Uh, perfect. Yes, girl. So you know you know that idea already. So how can you apply rhetoric, sp a specific type of rhetoric, or like a repetitive um, uh, idea, um, right? How do you condense these ideas? So we're going to look at all of these, and then um, and then we're going to start. Okay. So let's get going. Give me one second here, and then we can start. Okay, so what do I mean by quotes? And then you'll see how to, how to apply this rhetoric concept, okay? This one particular idea, okay? There's so many ideas of rhetoric, but we're just gonna talk about one, okay? So let's start uh, with uh, this quiz and I'll send this quiz to you. So let's see how many of you can understand it. Uh, um, simplify this. So growing up is losing some illusions in order to acquire others. And this is by Virginia Woolf, who's one of the featured authors in the SAT. I think she's a, um, appeared once at least. So what do you think this means? And that is what I mean by quotations, right? It's an important idea in a passage. Okay. Great. Perfect. So growing up is losing some illusions, right? You've got some illusions, right? And you're, um, you're leaving them uh, uh, behind, right? That's the idea, right? You're growing into a mature person that works. Okay. So, so many ideas are there. This person, this uh, Virginia Woolf um, was, um, was, a, was a bit pessimistic. This person was a bit pessimistic. So uh, yes, that'll also work. So the, this is, so I'll give you the, the uh, this is still on my computer, but I'll give this to you 
and you'll see how it works, uh, right? The link to this, and you can click on the answer. This is one of the answers. So we live in a world of illusion, right? That's what she's roughly meaning. We're always losing smaller illusions to, um, to learn more serious ones. Um, and in the end, they're all lies, right? So it's kind of like one illusion after the other is how you're doing it. But yes, you're right. You can also interpret it as being mature, okay? So that's the answer over here, uh, one of the answers. All right, let's try the next one. Okay, so once you understand this, your mind will start going along these lines and start improve, right? Start start understanding these. And these are all people from the 1700s and 1800s. Okay, let's try maybe two or three and then move on. So never close your lips to those whom you have already opened your heart. So heart is gonna mean something and closing your lips means something. So what would that mean, right? What's the meaning of uh, closing lips? right? This is like secrets. I'll give you the hint over here, right? And heart is you care for someone. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So um, stay in trust with the people you like. Exactly right. Very good. Very good. Yeah. And post your answers. I think that helps, right? Um, so remember, never close your lips to those who are, so first you have opened your heart to them, means you care about them, you love them, right? And don't uh, give your, uh, right? So very good, very good, uh, come on. I think that's one of the best ones. So you should not keep secrets from our loved ones, okay? That would be one of the answers. Again, it's English, right? It's, it's not math. So rough, rough translation would be here, okay? So I'm gonna send this link to you. I think it'll be helpful. How about this one? And melancholy, most of you know, it's sadness. Okay, and then we're going to move on to some, uh, some uh, bigger passages, but let's talk about this one first. Yes, so a knife's blade is also important. Why is she saying knife's blade, right? It's so thin. It's so thin, this difference between happiness and sadness, right? You can always flip from one side to the other. Right, so there's many interpretations. One of them could be they can never be separated, right? Or they're very, very um, one after the other kind of, okay? Now this is a longer one and Thomas, Thomas Paine is like one of the very popular ones, right? For these passages. So try to read this and summarize it, right? The longer the passage, the easier it is to actually summarize it, okay? Yes, Isis, that's also pretty good. Okay, so again, this, the idea is these long ones with a lot of commas, semicolons, and un unnecessary ideas, like what do you think would this mean? Yes, yeah, Adi, I like that. So yes, the the... So the what we obtain too cheap, we esteem too lightly. That's also important, right? So you work, and then if you work hard, or the the more uh, conflict you have, the more you value something, right? It's like it's like water. Getting a bottle of water, right, is so easy. You just you just pay like two dollars or a dollar to get water. But imagine you're in a desert, right, and you're it's so difficult to find water. You're thirsty, etc. At that time, right, you can pay you can pay as much as you want, right? To just get a glass of water, right? So that's what it means. The more effort you have to put in, the more, um, the more value you put in. Very nice guru, yes. So the more we suffer or the more effort you put in, the more value um, that particular object has, okay? All right, this is a lighthearted one. This one we don't need to work on. Uh, this is also uh, not as important. Let's look, at, let's look at this last one and then let's move on to um, another part of the um, practice here. Okay, we learn from history that we do not learn from history. Okay, this is a shorter quote, but it has a lot of meaning. So see if you can interpret this and then. Okay, what do we learn that we do not learn? Okay, history repeats itself. That's nice, Selena, that's very good. Yes, yes, very nice, Katie. Very good. History repeats itself, right? We learn from our mistakes. So the idea is we do not, right? We do not learn from our mistakes because we do not learn from history, right? 
We keep on repeating our mistakes. Yes, Sanvita, that's very good. Don't repeat, right? We we keep we keep repeat we keep repeating our mistakes, right? It's like the mistakes of war, right? The there are so many wars in the 1800s. Then we did like a World War One in eight, right? In the 1900s, and we had World War Two. Then we had Vietnam. Then we had so many other wars going forward. We never learn what we need to do because we never learn. We keep repeating the same mistakes, right? Uh, exactly right. So that's what that's what this passage is talking about. Okay, so th this this piece over here, there's about 250 quotes, right? If you want, I will send this list to you and it's gonna have these answers. So just email me if you want this quiz uh, and I'll send it to you. Okay, um, and it's all random. So perfect. So just email me, uh, and then you'll uh, you'll get it because this is just a starting point. And this these are kind of interesting, right? Perfect. Just uh, just remind me, guys, and I'll send it to you. Um, okay. Um, so this is just a starting point. It's just a starting point of the history passage, right? That's your first thing that I was talking about: the quotes and the quotations, right? The quotations. So once you once you get a hang of what what these people are talking about in the 1800s right specifically 1800s or early 19 1920s or something their their grammar is different their vocab is different right you need to understand this idea of quotations okay now the second thing is uh uh, uh no no Luis. these are not going to be uh part of the uh part of the part of the test it just for your enhancement right is the easiest way is the easiest way to start understanding these hard uh, long passages okay now the second one we're going to do is our mini passages okay now many passages are important because you don't get you don't get distracted by a lot of information just very short passages read them understand them and solve the, and answer and answer your questions right that's going to be helpful so let's see what we can do about this uh, shorter passages okay and again, I have tons of these, right? So let's see what we can do over here. Now, the main idea is, right? The, there's only, there are gonna be only a few questions in this. What's the main idea of the passage? But before that, let's just try to read this passage over here, okay? And give me one second, I'll... Um, okay, now we are getting closer and closer to how uh, these 1800s passages, right? These classic, there's uh, these history-ish passages, uh, how they um, they can be answered. I'm gonna we're gonna talk about answering the questions in the last uh, half hour, but let's look at how we can look at um, these questions. Okay. All right. So let's actually try to. Sorry about that. Let's actually just try to read. My bad. Um, Let's try to just read this part here and try to interpret in our own words. Um, yes, that's for the AP English and for your essay writing, right? It's in the first, if you've got the uh, five paragraph essay, uh, right? It's gonna be at the start, end of the intro. But here, the it's not that way because this was written, Guru, this was written uh, 150 years ago, right? So they had a different style. It can be anywhere. Right, it can be anywhere. So you gotta be careful with these.